Okay, I'm ready. Let's go ahead and get started on uh, an interesting subject, one that has had a profound, profound impact on my life. Cindy and I were talking about this this morning. Um, and she had she was had heard our preparation for it yesterday, and she said, "You know what, Rich? When I was out Christmas shopping yesterday, she said I thought to myself that the reason I'm able to do." And we're able to do all that we do, Christmas shopping, you know, for our family, for others, for extended family, um, some who are in hardship, is because of the business plan you wrote and read. She says, I'll never forget listening to you every morning, every evening, you know, right when you got up from bed, right when you, before you went to bed, reading the plan, the intensity with which you wrote it and read it and and the way you kept it updated. And she said it had a wonderful impact. And here we are, you know, 30 years from when you first started doing that, and look at all the wonderful things that have happened to it. Very few people, and I'm not one of those few, very few people can get a kind of a, a vision in their head and then carry all, carry forward with all the details and structure it takes to bring that vision into reality. You know, it's interesting, as you look at the cover page of this webinar, and it shows the dictionary, and it shows like the third meaning, it talks about something that's in the imagination, the fourth one, which says imaginative insight. <clears throat> this is what it did for me. It stimulated my imagination. It gave me insight into what I had to do every day. And so this is for the purpose of helping you create a clear vision for your business. And <clears throat> for this year, for every year, and I want you to know it's not something you can just do once. You'll update it. Your understanding will increase. Your experience will broaden. And you'll add other things to remind you. Sometimes what you used to have to write out, because of having done it repetitiously over a period of time, you just need to write, the next time you write your, 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 rewrite your vision in your plan, is you just need a couple of words to remind you, and can, because the details are now habit to you. You know, but we'll talk about these things, and let's have some fun with it. And, uh, there's a lot of reading in this one. I apologize, I, Rather than handle it verbally, but there's some stuff I just have to read to you that will come up here in a few slides. Let's go to the next one. You know, I want to talk to you about the power of visualization. You know, this is, now a lot of you on this call are familiar with the subject, do some of it. Um, a few of it, do, a few of you do it very well, but most of us don't. This takes practice. It's not, it's, you know, we always are visualizing something. There, our mind works in pictures. Ed talked about this in our leadership meeting in, uh, in New York. <clears throat> but our visualization drives us. Whether we picture negative things, we're drawn toward making that a reality. We're, if we visualize very positive things, we're drawn toward making that a truth in our lives. And so your visualization can be guided by this plan, by what you have in writing for you. And most people do not do that. I want to talk to you about the power of being your own programmer. You know, when you think about it, when we're raising children as parents, we want to be, in the early, in the early years, their programmers. We don't want television to, and television shows to be their programmer. We don't want their peer group to be their programmer. If we're thinking right and doing, fulfilling our responsibility as parents, we teach correct principles about the right kind of behavior, about how to treat each other, you know, about harmony in the home, about understanding their responsibility, how to be accountable. I mean, there are lots of things we could talk about in that realm. But think about it. Are you your own programmer in a way that is dynamic and is positive? Do you just wake up in the day and then your day is just full of whatever happens to you? You don't make it happen. It happens to you. That's how most people live their lives almost every day of their lives. 
Whereas if you woke up, read your plan, it was a plan you'd been reading for months. It was a habit you'd built. You'd be driven, focused, dynamic in a way that you wouldn't be without that and that most of the world isn't. I elevated my performance because I took over my own programming. And, I, and all of a sudden, this average and ordinary guy who had all kinds of tendencies toward mediocrity and still does, was able to overcome that and start replacing that with new patterns of thought, which created new patterns of action, which created new patterns of result. And all of a sudden, people started talking to me as if I was some stud, you know, and I started having superstar numbers, and this is the way I did it. And uh, don't fool yourself. I wasn't born with that. I didn't have those habits coming into the business, but I was taught by a mentor to take over my own programming. Let's talk a minute about the power of written goals. <clears throat> you've heard it said, if you've heard anything said about goals, that if you don't put them in writing, they're not real. And what that means is you don't keep them in your mind. And so there's a quote I'll give you at the very end of this from a former president of the United States and former commander-in-chief, um, our commander of all the uh, allied forces in World War II, and I'll discuss that principle then. But he emphasizes the aspect of planning and all the importance of the planning as it gets into actually delivering it to the printed page. <clears throat> if you don't have it in writing, your goals are vague and they don't have much power. At the same time, you've got to have a written game plan. Your goals have to be connected with a game plan. I've met lots of people who sat in a meeting and wrote down goals, but because there was no plan to achieve them, they didn't really move that much toward them. It's a combination of the goals and the plan that give this power. When you have spent, and this is work, when you spent the time to get your goals determined and to have a written game plan, wow. I mean, all of a sudden there's this, this process of transformation. <clears throat> With it comes the power of repetition. Because you're doing it morning and night, and that repetition is beginning to flow into your conscious and subconscious, this starts changing the way you think from moment to moment and day to day. It goes back up to the issue of being your own programmer. That repetition, combined with your determination and your will to be your own programmer, is what causes you to get programmed. We aren't hardware that are controlled by software that's just written once, and there we got it. We've got to repeat stuff to ourselves all the time, or we don't keep it learned. And when we stop repeating it, it starts fading. I mean, you think about the, all the classes you had, how hard you studied maybe in high school or college, how much you studied, the hours you put in to prepare for, a, for an exam, a final or a midterm, and you learned the stuff. But then you went on to other stuff the next semester or the next year, and shoot, you couldn't recall it a few weeks later, maybe a couple of months later. Some of it stays. It's in there somewhere, but you certainly don't have recall of it of any in any major or clear way. And so we need constant repetition. That's part of the principle behind this. Then what we get with this is something that's very powerful that very few people have, and that's clarity. And so when you kind of stack these things up together, what it'll give you is world class concentration. You've got clarity. And so you've got great concentration on the stuff you know you want to do. You repeat it to yourself. It's written. It can never get far from your mind or, or awareness. <clears throat> your goals are clear. Your plan's clear. And you've taken charge of your life in a way that you never have before. This, I'd be hard-pressed to say I've done anything that had a greater effect on my life, my business, my family life, than, than what I'm going to talk to you about now. So let's talk about how you do it. And there, there are four pages we're going to cover on, four pieces of it. I want to go over. Then I'm going to give you an actual plan in a couple of different areas of life. So let's talk about goals, objectives, 
deadlines. And so let's talk about it from a business plan perspective for our business model. First thing you need to do is you need to get fixed in your mind, the exact, and in your mind now, you've got to work this out in your head. You're sitting with a notepad and a pen, and you've got some time. Note, you remove distractions, get rid of, get rid of the technology around you. It's not, it's not time for you to be talking particularly to anyone else. If you're, if you have a, a spouse and you need to talk about this once you've spent some time working on it. But I used to actually go to a public library, the San Jose Public Library, and get away from everything when I revamped my plan. I had a certain table in the upper front corner by the windows, and I would sit there, look out at the city, and without any distraction, nobody could call me, I cleared my schedule, and I got this, and I got my work done. <clears throat> but I figured out exactly the number of crews, sales, the promotions I wanted to see happen in my organization, the income I wanted to earn, the savings I wanted to accumulate within the time frame I was going to talk about it that I desired. And you have to have, you have to be definite as to your amount. There's a, there's a psychological power in being definite. Part of that ties back to the principle of clarity. You've got to have real, exact numbers that you focus on. When you do that, it starts having power in your life. Next, you've got to determine, you've got to think this through, and this is where you've got to talk. If you're with your family, if you have a family, you've got to talk about it within your family. You've got to determine exactly what you intend to give in return to achieve these things. Because there's no such thing as something for nothing. So you've got to pay a price. You're going to have to sacrifice to move yourself into a new life and a new lifestyle. And it's worth it as long as you maintain a certain level of balance. We'll talk about that later too. You determine exactly what you intend to give in return to achieve your goals and dreams. This has such power in lasering you in. But you need to remind yourself, and that's part of why we get, get this determined early right up front before you put it to writing. You've got to get it clear in your head. What am I going to do? What price am I going to pay? You know, it's kind of like going into negotiation for a car. You've got to figure out in your mind, what are you willing to pay for that thing? And, and have it clear in your mind, or you're going to get shoved around and pay too much. And so you've got to get clear, what is it you are going to give in return? Next, you've got to determine a date. Not only do you have to have an exact number in your head and a clarity on what you're willing to give, You've got to have a date. Everything's got to have a deadline. You know, for years I've, I've used an analogy. Imagine playing a football game or watching a football game where there was no end zone. The field just went on and on for miles. Someone caught a pass out in front of the defense, and they just kept running like Forrest Gump in the movie. They had to put up a sign that said, stop, Forrest, stop, right, because he just kept running. <clears throat> Somebody told him to run and he ran. You got to have a definite end to, to your effort, you know, on a football field so that you know when you're in the end zone, you know when you've scored. This is your end zone. Your definite date is your end zone. I remember a time when I, first time I established definite dates, it was for promotions early in my career. And I made the first couple on my promotion chart, but I missed the third one. Because I missed it, I had extra urgency because I knew I'd missed the deadline. And I almost caught up because I only missed the next one, which was my SMD promotion, by a couple of weeks. Though I'd missed my third promotion by a couple of months. So I almost caught up the time by, because I had the urgency to catch it up because I knew I'd missed it. Without it, it wouldn't have had that kind of effect on me. And you've also got to commit to your deadlines. It's got to mean a whole lot to you. Some people set deadlines, they don't hit them, and whatever, and I'll get another one. You set another one out far enough away that you don't have to worry about it a while. Then you don't hit that one either. Then that's not excellence. That's not someone who's going to change their life. That's someone who's giving it lip service. So exact numbers in relation to your objectives and goals. Right, you've got to be definite. What are you willing to give in return? You've got to be clear on that. 
definite date for when you're going to have those exact numbers or your promotions or whatever it is, and then you commit to those deadlines. That's the first piece of this, and that's the first homework assignment that I'm assigning you now if you haven't done this work. Change your life in 2012. Have a completely different result than you've ever had before. Do this. Let's go to the next one. Now let's talk about strategy and logistics. <clears throat> this is important. You've got to create a definite plan now for carrying out your desire. So you have your exact number of recruits and sales and promotions and all income and savings, and but what's your plan? All right, there's a huge gap between numbers laying on a page that you want real bad, but not having an idea of how you're going to get it. What do you got to do every day? What do you have to do every week? What do you have to do every month to make this happen? A definite plan for carrying out your desire, and then you've got to start on it. You don't need to wait to January 1, all right? You need to start today on making this thing happen. Now, the first piece of making it happen is finding out what you want to make happen and then finding out what your plan is to make it happen. Now, some of you are going to feel inadequate here. You know, wait a minute. But you've had, some of you have been around a while. You've got lots of notes to draw on, and you need to work it out in your own mind. Then sit down with somebody who really knows, and, and if you have some questions while you're working on it, pick up the phone. Ask some questions. I'm working on my plan. But I'm struggling with what I think I should do here and there. Get a little bit of coaching. Get a little bit of mentoring. Then hang up the phone and get back to work on designing your plan. It needs to be a plan that excites you. And uh, and I'll talk about some other things. I want you to put in it here in a second. Now, next one. <clears throat> I want you to write it out. All right? You're getting a definite plan. So you have your notes, kind of your rough rough image of what it is. You have your notes about your exact numbers and your date deadlines and you know and all of that stuff. You have what you're willing to give in return. You know, you've now been working on your plan to, to make all that happen. Now you're gonna write it all down. You're gonna write a clear, concise statement of your specific goals, your objectives, you're gonna establish a time limit for them. You're gonna state what you intend to give in return and you're gonna describe describe clearly the plans which you intend to achieve them. This is the heart of it. Now it's rubber to the road time. You've got to get it all in writing. It's got to make sense to you. You've got to have a picture when you're reading the different aspects of it about what it means. <clears throat> and now your life's ready to be changed. So, clear, concise statement of your goals and objectives. A time limit for each one. Some of those goals you're going to have... I want to do this and this, this month in the base. And this many recruits, this many sales in the super base. So some will have monthly. Some of them will have annual deadlines. I want to save this much by December 31st of 2012. I want to have earned this much. I want to get out my income by this time. I want to be earning X amount per month by June of 2012. These things need to be in there. <clears throat> and and you have a plan for making it happen. Next one. I'm taking a sip of water here. You guys, I love talking about this because how much good it did me. And I know there's some people listening right now that are going to do this, and um, and I'll be enjoying watching you kick butt this year and the years ahead as you apply this. Now, you've got it all written. It's clear. You got it on, it could be on a yellow notepad, you put it in, you know, Microsoft Word and had it printed, whatever, right? And you got it down. Now you start your programming. You read your written statement aloud. You got to say it out loud, twice daily. Now why is it important to say it out loud? Very simple. When you read something and it's, the words are being pronounced in your mind, that's one level of programming. As you say it out loud, it's another level of programming. As you hear your own voice say it, it's another level of programming. So in a sense, you actually hear it three times. In the mind, articulating it with your voice, and listening to yourself with your own ears. You know, <clears throat> not to mention that it announces to the world, you know, and in your family anyway, what's going on. 
She read it aloud twice daily. When it's first thing in the morning when you rise up and night before you go to bed. Here's what you've got to do while you read it. You see yourself hitting those numbers. You feel how good it's going to feel. You believe yourself already in possession of what of the recruits that you plan on hitting, of the production you want to hit, of the promotion. You maybe see yourself walking up a stage at a format school and your leader promoting you. You might be picturing yourself up on the stage at the convention, right, in front of thousands of people, you know, getting recognition for being a number one base shop in the country, for having great numbers, for being a top personal recruiter, whatever it is, right, you've got, as you read it, now, what Napoleon Hill taught, and this is where I got these principles, between mentoring and, and the book Think and Grow Rich, and of course this was on page 36 of that book, what he said and what he taught, if this is critical to your success in having this work for you. Seeing, feeling, and believing it. Because that empowers you in that intangible, remarkable, magical, I believe spiritual way that causes you to draw all of that to you. And people see you acting as if. It's a, it's a change in body language. It's a change in the tone of voice. It's a change in the the way you say things is a change in the way you you look when someone looks in your face or looks into your eyes. There's just something different about you because you are full of your plan. You're full of your goals. You're full of the things that empower you emotionally, which I'm about to talk about. Right? <clears throat> you must see it before you have it. You don't have it, then see it. You see it before you have it. You know that old saying, seeing isn't believing, believing is seeing. That's the power of faith. You're enhancing your faith. I see it. I know I'm going to have it. I want it, and I'm going to have it. You know, and that's, wow. What happens in this process is you start fueling a burning desire. I want these things to happen for us and our family. I want to be out of debt. I want to be secure. I want to have a paid-off house. Right? I want to have a bunch of money in savings. I want to have a business of providing for us and our family in a dramatic way. I want to have money to give. You know, these things are wonderful in our lives. You know, when you can see families around you, maybe they're in your church, maybe they're in your family, or both, and you can anonymously reach into their lives your church leadership, or your own efforts within your family. And really do some positive things. And uh, stuff that means a lot to them. That's why we'd be blessed with that kind of prosperity, so that we can make a difference with it. Not just go around showing off stuff. And <clears throat> building a desire around those things is a big deal. How do you overcome... The obstacles that will stand between you and what you want without burning through them sometimes because you will not be denied. That's something, that would be a good phrase to write into your plan. I will not be denied. You put in your own words. How good are you going to feel when you do it? Man, let me tell you, you feel pretty good. You walk different, talk different, stand different, people perceive you different. And so, read it aloud, twice daily, morning and night, see, feel, and believe yourself in possession of it. Build that desire. Think about how you're going to feel. All right, let's go to the next one. I also want you to support this, your plan, with reading good books, listening to good messages, CDs, stuff on your iPod, whatever it is, right? But you've got to continue to feed your mind with positives that support the person you're trying to become through your plan. It inspires you. It'll give you new ways of, of seeing and looking at things. And when you when you update your plan, when it gets a little bit stale, and it will, this takes regular update, right? The things you've been listening to and reading, and sometimes it's stuff you listen to, like good messages within the company from leaders who are actually doing it. 
and, and or you'll be listening to someone in, in you know in some kind of, in a webinar like this or in you know in a class or in a convention meeting whatever and you go man I gotta add that to my plan and then you sit down you update your plan you got these notes you asterisk certain things when you're you know when you're in a situation where you're being taught you're having a phone conversation with a mentor and you'll take these things and add them to your plan. It'll keep your plan dynamic. It'll keep it effective. Now, before we put up the next bullet point, I want to talk to you about the power of emotion. Anyone who's ever heard me talk, heard me talk, if you listen to me any length of time, and I apologize if you had to do that. The reality is, I'll talk to you about emotion. I'll talk to you about the power of emotion. I'll talk to you that we are emotional creatures, then that we are driven by emotion, whether we admit it or not whether we're accountants or engineers and we think ourselves as a little bit passionless, it's all nonsense. Human beings are driven by emotion. And we need to get emotional threads throughout our entire plan. <clears throat> One of the ways I did it, and I actually would kick off reading my plan with something where I had written deep and important emotions in what I call the top ten reasons list. And I'm going to go over, um, and it's a sample of top ten reasons. What I wanted to do before I got into my plan of action and my goals is I wanted to energize myself. I wanted to energize myself thinking about why I was doing this. Because your written plan would have what you want. Your written plan would have right how you were going to get it. But why? You know, what were the emotional drivers behind what you want and how you're going to get it? In other words, what are you fueling it with? Coming back to burning desire and all this stuff. I wanted to start, because Napoleon Hill in, in Think and Grow Rich really said, part of the magic for achieving greatness is burning desire. Some people work to develop it. Some people don't. Those who do blow away the performances of those who don't. And so what that translates to is deep and important emotions, right, that make us work. So let's talk, let's take a look um, about that and the thought of, but before I do, I have one other thing that I need to go over, and that's your job. Go ahead and throw all these up there. You knew, if you knew me, um, we weren't going to do this this uh, presentation without putting Tim Tebow in it somewhere. Guys, this stud. Look at that. Look at those biceps. Looks like Ed my left. Unbelievable. Anyway, math is to inspire others. You've got to help. At you know the stuff we've just gone over. There's a whole bunch of people not listening to this webinar. Maybe you need to have them listen to it and make sure they do. Maybe you want to take what 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 we're teaching here and pass it on yourself in your own way. Whatever you choose, you've got to do it. You've got to help and challenge your people to do the previous steps we've just discussed. You've got to help and challenge them to achieve their goals, and I've got to remind you, not yours. Don't get up, talk about how psyched you are about your goals, and expect that to jack up everybody. They're not in this business for you. They're in this business for themselves and their families. So yippee skippy that you're hitting your numbers, right? But our task as leaders is to lift them up to theirs. Well, before they're going to do it, they've got to set them. They've got to put deadlines. They've got to figure out what they're willing to give in return. All the stuff we talked about. They've got to get it in print. You've got to have and keep high positive expectations with standards of excellence. It's part of what you've got to write into your plan. But you've got to do that for yourself, but you've got to be doing that for others. So you've got to write your expectations of others into your plan too, as well as help them, you know, get their own stuff clear. You know, we were we were gonna actually put Tebow on every page, but we thought that might be a little much for some of you. All right. <clears throat> that was for my my brethren in Denver. All right, let's talk about top ten reasons. For any business plan to grow wings and fly, you gotta engage your most intense positive emotions. And here's the one one way it can be done. Let's go ahead and read them. Here's what I would read to myself prior to getting into my plan. And I'm just going to read it to you the way I read it to myself so you can hear 
how it works. My love, and of course that said Cindy, I didn't say blank. My love for Cindy and our children creates a desire to provide real security, a life free from fear and worry about material concerns. I want independence for her and I so we can spend our time and energy in our relationship and our family. It is exciting to work within a situation that encourages emotional growth day by day. It requires me to become a better person. I can be somebody, have a feeling of self-worth, and know I can make a difference for others with my life. Yeah, right? I want to be part of an enterprise effort and career that I can love doing. I love the challenge and the positive excitement. I want it to test me, to cause me to extend myself, and to motivate me to become all I can become. I love to help and give to others as a way of life. I gain great value and happiness and a powerful feeling of well-being by such effort. It is great to associate with leadership I can follow, with confidence in their character and morality. I can be in the people business and grow in my understanding of human nature so as to apply that invaluable understanding to motivate others to be good, to be somebody for wholesome reasons and purposes. I have and maintain total financial independence, to have peace of mind, and to make decisions based on motives other than my own financial needs. I must use my resources to bless the lives of others. We will make our home a place of safety and security, a place in the world to call our own, and raise our children with happiness and love. And I can aspire through this effort to know that I made a positive difference in my business life, that I kept balance and perspective as to what a good life really is. Whew. Right now, before we go on to the next page, understand, when you keep reading that stuff to yourself, and I tell you what, when I first sat down to work on my top ten reasons, it kicked my butt. I got down one, then two, then three, and then four was like restating two and three, and I, and I sputtered, and I struggled, and all of a sudden I was a little bit alarmed. I thought, am I shallow? And the answer was, yeah, I was a little bit too shallow. We don't think about this stuff enough. We certainly don't repeat it to ourselves enough. And so I thought of a few good motivations, because by the way, one thing I forgot to mention, go back to the previous page, is you, you go through this list, you don't see anything that's about, you know, real materialism. Because even my financial independence was to free my family up from worry and concern, to give us peace of mind, and to put us in a position to bless other people's lives. Not just, it is, your top ten reasons just can't be car, boat, a fancy house, uh, and bling stuff that I can show off. That does not engage the right kind of emotions that causes you to become a great leader, that causes you to transform yourself from a selfish individual to a giving, compassionate, Right? Sympathetic leader of men and women. And so your top ten reasons need to be noble things. Not superficial. Not just material. And there's nothing wrong with having some material motivation. Right? My savings goal, I guess in one sense, a very real material motivation. Getting out of debt was a material motivation. But it's all about the emotional things that came from no longer being in debt and having a bunch of savings. And what that did in release of tension in our lives. And the kind of thing where my wife can say to me like she did this morning. I'm so thankful for what we've been able to do. And what, how I'm able to go Christmas shopping. And do all these things for our family. And not have to worry about it. Yeah, I looked, she said, I looked around me and I knew a bunch of people that were buying all this stuff. Couldn't afford it. But they were going in debt to do it. But they were doing it anyway. You know, and this is all ties back. The 30 years ago when this this work started going forward in my heart and mind. All right, so these top 10 reasons. Noble stuff. Want to become a better person. Want to make a difference for others in my life. Want to become all I can be. Want to help and give to others the way of life. You know, and, the, and I'm excited about the happiness I feel and the well-being by that effort. I want to be I want to be excited about the leaders I follow. That's also not so subliminal a message to some of you out there who probably need to clean it up a little bit, right? People want to look to you with confidence in your character and morality. And if you aren't behaving right, 
right, then we're all supposed to be working on that. I'm still working on it. You need to be working on it. It's a good thing to have in your in your motivations, in your top ten reasons. You see, the winds blow. Storms come. Tough times hit you. Adversity is part of life. My top ten reasons help me burn through all adversity. Help me drive through and over all obstacles. People quit. I'm going to go get some more folks. Nothing was going to stop me. Because I was going to have these things in my life. I was going to be this kind of person. Now, now I'm going to take what we discussed prior and show you how this can be done, not just in a business way, but in a personal way. A lot of us listen on to this right now, myself included, want to have wonderful, happy family lives. We know that's the most important thing in our life. So I just don't want you to apply this understanding, these principles, to just business, just acquiring wealth and recognition in the company. I want you to take these principles also, and I want to show you now and read to you kind of, it's one that was written, you know, I wrote for personal, but it's, I've made it a little bit generic so that you can understand Think about, as I read this next thing to you, this next page, think about the power of this in improving your marriage, improving your relationships and your relationships with your children. Let's go ahead. This is a personal plan. This is what I read to myself. I am and must constantly strive to be a great loving husband and father. A loving, warm, tender, happy home life with my family is the way to experience heaven on earth. I will find deep happiness and peace through my service to my family. My commitment and focus is constant and eternal in perspective. I will be positive and with humor look on the bright side of how wonderful our life together is and will always be. We will work together to have patience, self-respect, respect for each other, trust, harmony, and fun. We will regularly count our blessings. We'll be unselfish and serve one another. We will honor our parents. I'll be creative and thoughtful in my romance with Cindy. I have a dream wife. We will share many wonderful times together as I focus my love on her happiness. We will have weekly dates and regular exciting mini honeymoons. Man, I love those mini honeymoons. I am father, and that would be the number, my life, three remarkable trip to three remarkable children who will know every day their father loves, respects, and believes in them. I will have a private, loving, one-on-one -on -one listening interview with each of them every week. I'll set this appointment every Sunday for the week following. My role as a husband and a father is my greatest joy and responsibility on this earth. I am happy as I commit all I have to their happiness. I am so blessed to be a husband and family man. My heart is full, and this blessing is truly wonderful. Now, I want you to think a second if you read your own personal version of that to yourself. What would that do day to day and how you conducted yourself in your home? Would you find it harder to raise your voice in anger? I think you would. I think that stuff would start, if you had, if you would do that, I think you'd start eliminating it. Would you zero in more on the needs of your children? Yeah, you would. What would that mean? More loving, positive relationships. It would mean that they would be stronger, better adjusted, more ready to face the world when their time came, more ready to do the same thing for their children when they became parents. <clears throat> this stuff would change the world. Think if everybody in our countries read something like this. They talk about the things that meant so much to them. And think about how it would start to shape your thinking and your actions and your behavior. So just don't think about this as it relates to business, right? Kicking a little butt on the leader's bulletin. No, I want you to kick butt on the leader's bulletin. Saving another couple hundred grand. I want you to do that and then more. But I also want you to take these principles, just like in anything that I, that I teach, as I try and turn it back to how we can improve our home lives, our family lives, so we can really be happy. If you're really happy, we, we lead better. Isn't that right? We have more to give, and we make a bigger difference.
Life's better. So that's the personal plan aspect of it. It was concise. It only took me a couple of minutes to read. But now it makes me want to knock it out of the park when I go home to Cindy. You know, when I see each of our children. I'm even going to be nicer to my son-in-law. He's sitting right next to me. He's included in this too. Awesome. How about that? <clears throat> now, let's talk about applying this purely financially. So let's go and do a financial discussion. You know, I used to start off my financial section of my plan, and I used to say these five words, great debt-free financial strength. That was my motivation. That was my mentality. That was the mental picture. Great debt-free financial strength. Yeah, right? Jacks me up as I say it now, and I've been debt-free for a long time. Great debt-free financial strength. I am wealthy, debt-free, and independent. Now, I was saying that to myself before I was. But by golly, I visualized it, right? I internalized it. See, I saw it. I felt it. I believed it. And that made me want to save more, spend less, keep driving toward these goals. So let me go ahead and just read through it. I am wealthy, debt-free, and independent. I will continue to hold my conservative, service-oriented, debt-despising philosophy. I am achieving all the following objectives by increasing my income and controlling my expenses. It feels fabulous to experience total financial independence. From January to December, I will put blank amount per month, 100000 per month, 200000 per month, $500 per month, whatever your number is, right? Right? And I put a comma there, and I would probably eliminate that. You can edit this for, uh, for, for whatever. From January to December, I'll put blank per month on my home mortgage. Because you guys, I wanted to pay off my house. And then I did. Right? Then I saved a bunch of money and bought a second one, paid cash for it. Then I bought a third one, right, for my folks, paid cash for it. Got one now in in, uh, in Pleasanton, where we don't plan on staying indefinitely. And I'm not sure I'll pay that off completely, though we're paying it now. Right? But the reality is, that's the game. And so I get a house, pay it off. Get another house, pay it off. Get another house, pay it off. Get another house, pay it off. Some people say, Rich, you shouldn't do that. Well, I'm a lot happier than most people I know. All the stuff that happened with real estate and all that seems to worry more people more than it does me. You know, you call your own shots on this stuff, but that was something I did. And then I, anyway, I'm distracting myself. To pay off my last remaining debt, I will never need or want to borrow again. You know how much fun that is to read? I mean, I haven't needed to borrow again. Doesn't mean I haven't used it a couple of times. I used free money to buy a, buy a Chevy, you know, <laughs> the Suburban. They're going to, you know, do it for free, so I paid them off monthly because it didn't cost me any interest. So I used that time value money on them instead of the other way around. But I'm not a big borrower in interest. Don't enjoy it that much. Love being debt free. And then I'd have an amount. I will have blank amount in personal cash savings by December 2012. I will have an average of blank, I will save an average of blank per month. I will have blank and liquid assets by January. And this one might be out three years from then or five years from then. Because I remember when I wrote five million in there. I remember when I wrote 10 million in there. I remember when I wrote 20 million in there. I'm going to stop annoying you. But I remember when I kept putting those numbers in there and we kept driving toward it. And then I'd say, tighten up and stay tight. I'm personal and business expenses. I have a clear written line on a budget for personal and business. My career for effort is in large part wasted without financial discipline. Update the objectives, these objectives regularly. I am a great steward and enjoy winning financially. Now imagine, imagine you reading your version again of this to yourself. What would that do in driving you toward becoming debt free and having a bunch of cash savings? And building up your net worth and your assets. Right? And having it, right? You can't keep reading, I'm going to put myself on a budget and not ultimately put yourself on a budget. You can't keep blowing money when you keep talking about, hey, all this work is wasted if I don't develop financial discipline. You know, and you save a certain amount and rather than get satisfied with it, you update your objectives. Well, you're updated because you read that to yourself regularly. It reminds you. 
you're determined to be a great steward and enjoy winning financially. I mean, this is cool, isn't it? Can you feel the power of it? Can you get a sense of it, of what this can do in your life? Man, it, like I said, sure, I've watched it work miracles in mine and work miracles in the lives of other people that actually paid the price to do this stuff and kept reading it. All right, now I'm going to shift gears, and we're going to go to a base and super base plan, and I'm going to talk about some of the things that I read to myself. I they, they kind of varied from era to era. It was a little simpler and more limited when I first started. It evolved. I kind of taken a mid-range plan that apply to a lot of you, and uh, I even know what you know. There's a certain number in here that lists a whole bunch of things you got to remind yourself of. That I'll point out here. But now I'm going to read you my base and super base plan. You know, and 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 think about as I read this, you doing a similar thing morning and night, every day, seven days a week, right? And times I'd pick it up in the middle of the day when I was feeling a little flat or something, and I read it to myself, top ten reasons in my plan, and energize my business, focus again. And uh, made me better in the next couple of interviews. And so, this this fuels this this fuels you. Let's go ahead. So let's talk about base and super base plan. Here's what I read. I'll be more. I must be more intense about what will win for my family and our team than I've ever been before. All the work we've done up to now has been to prepare for this move. Do not waste this golden opportunity to win big. That's sure how I feel about it right now, you guys. Lead the team more energetically and enthusiastically every day. Everything you've wanted to achieve is on the line. This rare time will not last forever. Give it all you have. We must gear up recruiting constantly. This is my greatest strength and ability. Attack, attack, attack. We must do more than 100 recruits and 200,000 points in the base. And 500 recruits and a million points in the super base in May. Now, whatever it was in January of 2012. Be intense about these goals and what you need to do to accomplish them. What am I willing to give in return? I am willing to give most of my time, six days a week, and invest a great deal of emotional intensity and mental energy to achieve total victory in my business. I'll be constantly positive. I'm going to grind it out and love it. My ultimate priority is rapid, effective growth. You must always be after it. Every day is important. Always need to be talking about the same things. It's got to be kept simple and consistent. Be obsessed with recruiting. Never take your concentration off of it. Recruiting is our business. Always talk it. Constantly challenge the team and our leadership to recruit, build, and lead. <clears throat> and then I went into a line out, things that I need to remind myself. My base shop is the originating source of all power, prestige, and income, and the key to the big time. I must build and maintain a giant base shop, my number one priority. I must also build a huge first-generation team of whatever your number was. You're 10, 25, 50. I had 100 SMDs written in that number, and I never did it in the first 10 years. But I got 75 of them right over that decade. All right, and I promise you one of the reasons I got 75 is I was reading 100. All right? I also must also build a huge first-generation team of however many, right? 20 SMDs in order to have a chance of total victory. Think big and keep it simple. I've got to be willing to do the same things over and over again. This has to be a special effort. Work hard. Set a superb personal example. Keep your personal activity high. Continue with personal recruiting and field training as an example to others to never quit their number one job. Follow up every aspect of our recruiting system. Control the point of contact. Make sure the new recruit is being helped to contact their natural market effectively. Motivate leaders to help. Talk invitations constantly. Always keep the pipeline full. Always create a high expectation of heavy recruiting activity. All big winners recruit big. Make sure BPM attendance, new and old, is rising. And you put your own terminology in here. You put your own priorities in here. But this is what I read to myself to get me where I am today. Do an, do and get rid of the D. Do an effective BPM and teach it to others. Make sure the BPM teams of our organization are motivated, enthusiastic, and know their responsibility. Follow up interviews, meetings, and classes. Make sure follow up all interviews, meetings, and classes. Make sure they're motivational and enthusiastic. Keep the team on fire. Make sure more and more new and old people come to our meetings. We must recruit above ourselves. Check age, marital, financial, and business status of our recruits. Make sure AMAs are in rapidly. Instill a sense of urgency in our leaders to follow up fast. Start our recruits fast. 
Challenge recruiting and field training from day one. Focus them on their SMD promotion. We are an SMD factory. Got another D in there. Always be an outspoken crusader. Educate the team on how and why we're right. That kept us doing things for the right reasons, you guys. Right? Make sure our recruits own the product. Make sure all who attend the BPM and those who don't are followed up for product. That kept their volume high while we were recruiting heavily. Promote day shop meetings, business format schools, fundamental workshops, training events, and big events. Use these as tools to stimulate increased activity among the team. Capture their imagination. Stretch their vision. Constantly review the field proficiency of our leaders. Always check new and existing leadership here. I used to pull them in for interviews and make sure they were sharp in their presentations, you guys. Expect a high volume of activity from all the leaders on the team. A good active base shop leader should be involved in these four recruits and eight sales per month. All levels in this business should be making a good income. Hold up successful members as heroes as they set winning examples. <clears throat> this is my check off list. Our base shop leaders must know how and do business plan to set goals, develop and maintain prospect lists or target market lists, invite the BPMs, control the point of contact, understand mode zone and have a sharp BPM protocol, run powerful, sincere BPMs in classes, do good follow-up interviews, know how to recruit one-on-one, -on -one, know how to be AMA aggressive, know how to sell and field train effectively, use the, know how to use the referral system, use the matchup system, meet all compliance requirements, promote team meetings, format schools, events, and move the team to major events, and follow up and monitor every aspect all the time. Man, that's the heart of it. I kept reminding myself, I gotta be doing this stuff. Our guys gotta know how to do this stuff. We raised some studs in this environment. Imagine reading this stuff to you morning and night with passion, seeing it, feeling it. Do you think you'd go into the office different? You think you'd hit the front door? You think you'd be communicating to your guys differently on the phone and everything else? Imagine programming yourself to be this sharp, this intense. You put your priorities, you put your focus into it, right? Whatever it is, I'm, that's cool, but do it. That's what reshapes your life. <clears throat> then I then I, I kind of get to work on me. Communicate, communicate, and communicate. Make constant phone and personal contact with all active people in your base. Zero in on your best players. Give them firm direction. Build a powerful phone, voicemail, note, letter, email, newsletter, mega habit. I'm a compulsive communicator. Talk to your first generation MDs, SMDs, right? And key leaders every week about their recruiting numbers, their points and their possibility thinking. Inspire them to excel. Meet with them personally once a month. Produce at least 50 new first generations, first generation SMEs by December 31st, and then I had a deadline, right? That was, that was the halfway point of getting the 100 that I talked about at the beginning. Meet with our leaders at all levels all the time. Watch for and ask about promising newcomers. Constantly set goals and motivate your leaders in terms of what will turn them on. Go over the goals and plan of action for each team manager regularly. Struggle to grow and improve yourself. My performance and abilities in the areas of motivation, communication, recognition, and personal relationships was, must always be improving. Concentrate on becoming better every day. Within all of my work, keep a great positive attitude. Express praise and love constantly to the team. Search for reasons to recognize and praise. Develop a creative and active recognition program. Always work hard to make others feel good. Always be in the dream selling business. Sell the dream. Sell the dream. Sell the dream. Think bigger. Think bigger. Think bigger. Think bigger than you ever have before. Always crank it up. Never accept defeat. Keep attacking. Make and save big money. Right? Earn five million dollars by December 31st, 20 whatever. Save blank per month and accumulate blank by the end of the year. You know how I repeat that to myself. To win big and be happy, my priorities must be in order. I'll fulfill spiritual, family, emotional, physical, and financial goals. I'll also keep an internal perspective. A winner is a winner in all areas of his or her life. This is life's great challenge. Don't ever let up. Be competitive. Be intense. You're meant to be number one. Don't let anybody take your spot at the top. Always be in the hunt. Be disciplined. Manage your time and praise God. Attend to your family. Do all the things you need to do to win big. Huh? That's the way I used to read it. You probably think I'm nuts. Well, let's compare our incomes. <laughs> let's compare the focus and intensity of someone who does something like this versus someone who doesn't. Man, I get fired up doing this. Woo!
Anyway, so you can see what it does to me. It raises my energy level, and it can be measured by by some kind of instrument. I my RPM would have increased about eight to ten thousand. I would have gone from just tooling along to Formula One, right? And I'd hit I'd hit the door with that energy. You can imagine if I close the door to my office and read this to myself. That helps too. You think that shapes how I do interviews? Do you think it shaped how I stood up in front of a team and talked to them and talked to them? Do you think it shaped when I stood up in front of a BPM? Do you think it shaped how I talked to them when we were meeting one on one or at, or as couples? You know, when I was doing that to coaching them as couples. Wow. But you can see I finished with emotional things, right? I reminded myself of the operational stuff. Then I started reminding myself of the things that I need to do to build people. Then I started talking about my own attitude. You know, it's this whole 22-25, positive attitude. Work hard to make others feel good. Sell the dream. Think bigger. Never accept defeat. Make and save big money. Keep my priorities in order because I want to remind myself of that, right? As that's one, and then never let up. Don't let anybody take your spot at the top. Always be in the hunt. Right? Do all the things you need to win big. I just love this stuff more than I can tell you. You know, and uh, and so I want you to I want you to think about what are you going to do to get your version of this in place before you come into the new year. Don't make me have to hunt you down, and slap you around. This is something you got to do, right? Consider this you're slapping around, right? Right now, picture. I want you to see, feel, and believe me, slapping you right now. <laughs> if you haven't done this, and certainly, you got to have this done by New Year's Eve. And as you're now working on this, right? If you're in a great relationship, you want to sit down with your sweetheart and go through some of this stuff with them, get their feedback on it too. Let them weigh in, remind you a few things maybe you left out or you could add or a little different twist on things. Because I tell you what, you start doing this stuff, the person you're in love with and living with you're married to is going to start thinking they married a maniac. Because you will move to maniac intensity and maniac RPM. And it's something. All right, now I just want to throw a couple of quotes at you. They kind of deal with this stuff. I mentioned President Eisenhower, General Eisenhower, and what he said. Plans are nothing. And, of course, he didn't mean plans weren't important. What he was emphasizing here, planning is everything. If you don't ever get around to planning, there's no plan. So plan would be nothing. The planning is everything. This is where you get clarity. This is where you come up with it. Because once you've done that planning, you're on your way to making it a reality. Another one, what Napoleon Hill said, and think you can grow rich. Reduce your plan to writing. The moment you complete this, you will have definitely given concrete form to the intangible desire. You got to get it down, right? He understood in all his study, and there's never a better book written, one before or since, on all these things as it relates to organizing yourself. To become great. And, and so this was his counsel. He touched on it early in the book because he knew you didn't get it all down and right. And the rest of what he was going to teach you was just going to go in one ear and out the other, just like a lot of those school studies did, and, uh, and wouldn't have power in your life. Another thing from a man named Orison Sweat Martin. I don't know who would name their kid Orison, but somebody did. But it was back in the 1800s. This is the guy who founded Success Magazine. A good system shortens the road to the goal. So you notice my system was written into my plan. In large measure, my written system was my plan. Certainly it was my how-to. About the recruiting, about the production, about following up, about the things that had to be done well. And so I want you to shorten the road to the goal by having a clear system written into your plan. <clears throat> and the last one is a Chinese proverb. When planning for a year, plant corn. When planning for a decade, plant trees. When planning for life, train and educate people. And I, you know, long before I read this proverb, which is very wise, 
I got into the training and education business with our teammates. And they were teaching me, and I was teaching them, and I had leaders that were teaching all of us, and I was taking what they taught me and continuing to pass it on. That's what you have to do. It's a wonderful thing to help, to give knowledge, with that knowledge power, you know, to change lives and to become what we want to become. And so, looking at my watch, we're right on the dot. We've gone an hour with this. I hope you've drawn good things from it. According to your need, write your plan according to your goals, your objectives, your system, and what it is you're trying to do with your business. But don't forget to apply these things at the personal level. Don't forget to apply them at the financial level. You can have a physical written game plan, reminding yourself of the things you want to do, the way you eat, the way you exercise, right, and your, and your mental approach to that. Seeing and fe feeling and visualizing yourself in great physical shape. You know, all of these things work. These principles work for whatever you aim them at. So aim them at the right things. All right. Appreciate you. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Happy New Year. Happy whatever else I should have said happy about. And, uh, folks, we got, we got some work to do. We got some lives to change, not just our own and our families. And we need to be busy about doing it as effectively as we can. And I couldn't have spent a better hour with you, in my opinion, telling you how to make yourself more effective and improve your life. There you are. Thanks a lot for listening. Thanks for being on this. See you later. See you next, see you next month, middle of the month, and we'll do our, our first webinar of, uh, of 2012. I haven't figured out what I'm going to do yet. That's why I'm not announcing it. I just promise you it'll be a good launch. Thanks.